I am excited to play with you today. As I told you before, uh, last week I wanted to show you a few more of the fall uh, release. And so I have a few more projects that I have done. Okay, so today we are going to, uh, let me just show you a few of the projects using a few of the new, the fall releases. I'll show you that one after. So I, I have to confess, I've had a really crazy week, so I wanted to do a little bit more than I was able to do. So I finally had to just kind of um, surrender to <laughs> life. So I didn't get everything done I wanted to, but I can at least give you a good sense of what I was trying to do. So first I'll show you this card. This card's all done. I made a little mini slim line and I actually, it was the first time I've ever made one. And they're kind of fun. They're six and a quarter by three and a quarter are the measurements for a slimline, a mini slimline card. And I used the rainbow dot slimline paper. And so this piece right here, let me find this stamp set. I do have it here. This stamp set is called Fall Feast. And this is definitely you get a lot of bang for your buck. You've got this beautiful background. Uh, sorry, I got some ink on mine. Proof that I, proof that I play. Okay, so I, you've got um, this really cool background stamp. And as you can see, I just used it really subtly on this card. I used it with just the embossing ink pad. So it's really subtle. It's just really uh, adding a little texture to the background. Um, but you could emboss that. You could totally color it. If you love to color, that would be a great one to color for fun if you just need a little coloring therapy. And then it comes with these five little extra accessory stamps. And if you look closely in the pattern, you'll find them in there. Like there's the sunflower, there's the berries, there's the pumpkin. You've got your turkey and your acorn. And you can pop those up or you can even just stamp it twice color whatever ones are your favorite ones, and you can uh, pop those up or whatever suits your fancy. Anyway, that's a really fun set. You can see I just used a few of the little accessory stamps. And this little guy right here, the sentiment is from the Fall Forest, wonder where it was, the Fall Forest Chipboard Stickers which are super cute and they coordinate with the fall forest paper, which I do believe I showed you, I, I think I showed you last week, but just in case, I'll just kind of show you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I showed you this last time. Lots of beautiful papers. And these are um, eight by eight, I believe, which is fun because now we have these really great eight by eight album kits. And I have mine reserved for something that I wanna make, which I'm hoping to make soon, but that paper is perfect for these. It's like I said, it's eight by eight and so is the paper. Am I missing any comments or anything, Darren? I'm doing a lot of talking. Okay, <laughs> sorry. I know sometimes I get going and then I get hyper. Isn't it pretty, Jen? I love it. It's gorgeous. Okay, so we'll set this little guy aside. You can see it was really simple. I just did a little coloring with my uh, tri-blend markers and, you know, good to go. Super cute. This was really fun. I could totally get into sentiments made this way. All right, so the next card I want to show you. I This is one of the ones that I had to surrender. I have all of it done except I didn't get the sentiment on there. So I will have to do that before I take pictures of it. But I used um, super uh, nice thing is I used the pre-made card bases. I wanted to mention that on the slimline too. So Brutus Monroe carries slimline uh, pre-cut card bases. And I just took one, I folded it in half. It was the right dimensions going across. It was seven inches across. And then it's eight and a half inches long. 
So I just cut that down to where I needed it so that I had my, um, my the dimensions I needed for my mini slim car, the slim line. That's adorable. Oh, thanks, Jen. And then these are the uh, standard size A2 card bases. And they are just so convenient to have. I'm telling you what, I didn't think I needed them until I got them. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I never want to live without them. Okay, so I went ahead and used this with the new fall watercolor panels. I'll show these to you really quickly. These are be these beautiful prints are printed on watercolor paper. And even though it's printed on watercolor paper, I actually used um, my alcohol markers for that. I think I pretty much stuck with the, uh, the tri-blends again on that. And then in the background, I don't know if you can see it really well, but I used the set the scene clouds with, um, I used some distress oxide on that. I used the broken china to kind of make the clouds on that. I just wanted them to be somewhat subtle. And then this little strip of paper here is from the, what is the name of that paper? It's melon. Fresh melon. Fresh melon. I just realized I didn't take the, I didn't take the easy tab off my adhesive. I was like, that doesn't seem stuck down very well. Okay. So that is that. Oh, and this, this darker paper, I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of nice because it coordinates really well with the trunk of the tree. It is actually from the cabin, winter cabin paper pad. And so that's what I just did for the back on that. You don't see a whole lot of it, but I like the way it looks anyway. All right, let's see. Let me gather up our panels. You have probably seen some of these designs. Donna says I love this card. It reminds me of Happy Times with my family picking apples. Oh, Donna, I love that. That sounds like fun. I would love to have an apple tree. So you've seen the pumpkins. You, I'm sure you've seen some beautiful samples that our design team has come up with with these watercolor panels. So pretty. Look at all these leaves. I mean, you could leave those just the way they are, or you could cut them out and use them for other things. All right. And then this is the one, this is the one I never got finished. But I'll show you what I was doing with it anyway. Robin says hello. Hi, Robin. This panel is... Uh, created using the picked patch stamp set and I was just kind of experimenting on just seeing how to color with um I had not tried coloring with velveteen glazes but so many people on the design team had I thought well I want to give that a shot so I used a series of colors you can see there's quite a few there um, and then I actually had a happy accident to be honest with you so, you know, last week I did the sprays, the chroma mists with the trees, and you've seen my, my infamous ugly box, and I still had the paper towels sitting in the box. In fact, I have it sitting here. So I went to um, kind of dab this and went like this, and I kind of liked what it did, so I did it more because it has the little pattern of the paper towel. And just that little tiny bit of blue was kind of a nice break from all of the golds and the oranges and the browns. So I liked it. I, I decided to go with it. And then I actually spritzed it just a little bit with acorn chroma mist. And then I went around the edges with some distress vintage photo uh, ink. So. I'm not sure what I'm doing completely yet. I kind of was playing with it. I thought it looked kind of fun with the plaid. Uh, but I'll play with it, and then you'll probably see me just post something on Facebook and Instagram. All right, but now let's get to the project that we're doing today. So now you've seen some of them. And now we're going to play with a new project. So... I am a fan of just, I love little gift boxes. I love to do little treat, treat bags, treat boxes, tags, treat toppers. And so I um, thought it would be fun to create a little box that maybe you could put 
at each place setting at Thanksgiving or even just a little gift if you want to just give a thank you. So we're going to create Mary a super quick hi. little little uh, box. Hi, Mary. Thanks for joining today. She says you can't wait to see what you're going to make for us. Oh, you're so sweet, Mary. I hope it turns out. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to take my Misty, my little mini Misty, and we are going to use... This is called Grateful Greetings. And this is, I think this is one of my favorite sets that came out for fall. You know, I say that about almost every set though. So really take that for what it is. Cause I, I do, I love them all. They're, it's a great release. So let's take both of these out. We are going to use them right up snug next to each other. So first I think this is how I do my Misty. I don't know. I think it's easier to just kind of place it up. Oh, wrong paper. Sorry. We're going to start with this paper. And you're off camera. Right now I am? Yeah. Your black part is off camera. All right. Yeah, hang on one sec. I'm just going to make sure I'm... You're better now. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was probably doing something. Okay. So I'm just going to make sure this is kind of lined up. This paper might be just a little too short. I had a feeling I might've cut it a little short. So I do have another one sitting here that will cut a little wider. Cause I wanna get that tippy tip of the leaf. So we'll just make sure on this one. That's wide enough. All right, let's just switch that out to this one. Better safe than sorry. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of line these up. But before I actually stamp it, I'm going to um, use my little anti-static bag. I can't remember what it's called. I should have told you, Darren, to include that. It's this little bag if you can figure it out. It's um, the magic powder bag and refill. So I'm just going to go over my paper because we are going to emboss this and we don't want our embossing, uh, embossing powder everywhere. We just want it on our design. So I'm just going to use it right in my Misty. I don't think it's going to hurt anything. And we will lift that back up a little bit and I just like to make sure everything's snug because in case it does move I know where to move it back to in between layers of ink okay that looks good so now I'm gonna take uh, the clear embossing ink get that out of our way I'm just going to ink up our stamp. If you have not tried the Brutus Monroe embossing ink, you really should. Hi, Jesse. This ink is awesome. You want to make sure it's nice and juicy. If not, if it is not, then, uh, the re-inker is available. Sometimes if I know I need it extra juicy, I'll just kind of come through and do a quick little layer. We'll just make sure it's definitely juicy. Okay. And we'll go ahead and stamp that. One of these days, I'm gonna buy one of those tools that everybody's using to make sure they get more of an even pressure. But I haven't done it yet. Oh, that's pretty good, isn't it? I think we did pretty well on that first go, but it says I- you need a Julie. Is it called a Julie? 
Yes, I probably do, Jesse. All right. You know what? Jesse said, you know what? I use a dry eraser from. She's a dry eraser. So. A dry eraser? That's from not staples. a bad idea at all. From Staples. So you're going to laugh because I just did all of this and I did it backwards. That is what I do when I do a live. <laughs> so. Maybe I'll show you how to do this a couple ways, or maybe we'll just, we can experiment, or I'll just flip it over. Let's flip it over. I did it backwards. I apologize. I got so concerned about making sure that I got that because I'm terrible about remembering to use the magic powder. So in my haste, I forgot to do what I meant to do. So let's just take a moment. I'll cut yeah, another one. A lot cheaper than Chuck e. Oh, that's good to know. All right, thanks for bearing with me, guys. Okay, so what we need to do. Jen says she does the same thing. It works great. Is we are going to clean that off now. I apologize for that. And we may actually try two different things. Okay. Michelle so. says hi. Hi, Michelle. Okay, so what I meant to do <laughs> was the first, uh, the first coat I did before on the one that you'll see at the end is I used Raven. And it was because at first I thought it might be kind of fun to color all the leaves. And I still think these leaves would be beautiful colored. But then as I started thinking about what I wanted to do with this, I thought I kind of wanted it to be a little more simple, a little more elegant. So I decided to simplify. Oh, there, the air conditioner turned off. Hopefully you can hear me better. Hopefully it wasn't too loud before. Okay. Same thing with the... Um, Raven ink pad, I will point out that if you um, find that your ink pad is getting a little dry, ink refills, re-inkers are available. Okay. Jesse says, it's nice to see I'm not the only one that does that. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your kindness. I'm really good at doing it when I'm live. <laughs> not that I don't do it anyway, but you know. You kind of sometimes lose your head a little bit when you're in the middle of a live, it feels like. I, I start thinking about all of the things I want to do and then I want to make sure I cover everything and sometimes that throws me off. Okay, so we're going to do, I think we'll do one more, one more go. I kind of don't do this to yours. <laughs> sometimes I kind of push... One little area. Try to add the pressure somewhere else because I have a hard time getting the middle sometimes. So, there we go. Okay. So now, we will clean our stamp one more time. And that line down the middle is not gonna matter. You can have a bubble under the stamp in plastic. A bubble under the plastic. Between stamp and plastic cover. Oh, yeah, that's possible. Okay. Let's see if I need to. I think we pretty well have that. I just don't want to muddy up my. Embossing pad. Love that sound. <laughs> Who loves that sound? I don't. You don't? It's like on Darren was annoyed with my squeaky sound. I'm sorry if anyone else was. <laughs> okay, so embossing ink now. Oh, see, I remembered though. Everybody should be really proud. <laughs> I remembered I needed to do this. 
So now I'm going to add some of this chalk. I think it's chalk, the anti-static stuff. Okay, reminds me of chalk if it's not. And let's go ahead and stamp that. Emily says, every time I ever re-stamp something, I have ruined the piece with double lines. How do you keep your paper so still? You know, like I said before, the biggest trick is to just make sure each time that it's really flush up against the side. Because I know there is nothing more frustrating. I have had that experience myself, and it drives me crazy. Yeah, so just make sure so that you don't get the double stamping, that you push it up against the sides. Because that is your best bet. All right, I think I totally killed my ink pad. Oh dear, I didn't have it cleaned very well. Good thing I have two of those. I'm not even gonna show you that because I will have to hang my head in shame if I do. Okay, so I will have to clean that off a little bit later. All is not lost, I promise. So now I've got all of my embossing ink on here. And I'm just showing you this because you can use whatever colors. And I am just, I, I was looking at the black and I'm like, I just wanted to have just a little more sparkle to it. And if I had thought of it ahead of time, I could have even just used maybe one of the, I didn't want mic drop. I love that embossing powder, but I wanted it a little more subtle than that. Well, I'll show you that after. Um, I just wanted a little bit of shimmer. And there is a Raven Sparkle, I believe. I don't know that I have it though. So I am using, this is called Fairy Dust. And I happen to know I, from the man himself <laughs> that uh, this just got restocked today. So if you love sparkle and you wanna be able to add whether you want it fully just this kind of sparkle or like, I mean, if you just want just only the fairy dust you could use it or if you want to add it to another color I'm going to add it to our original one so you can kind of see the difference this is a great one to have in your embossing powder stash because it just it's so pretty anyway it's pretty by itself it's pretty over the top of something and it just has such a lovely shimmer to it it's definitely one of my faves Okay, I did not, just a little disclaimer. Oh yeah, I did. I did do that because that was the whole deal. You can tell, I've got a lot going on. <laughs> so I, Darren, should I disclose what we're up to? Sure. So, little disclosure. We, uh, I'm gonna just let you in on a secret. We've been working on buying a house and it's not in the state that we're in now. So we're like, trying to negotiate a few things and trying to just get everything in order and oh my goodness my brain is tired <laughs> so if I seem just a little scattery please please have mercy <laughs> just a little a little overwhelmed Okay, so the one I'm doing first is the one that was just the um, embossing powder. I also want to note, I want you to notice that even though I, that embossing powder sat on there for a bit before I actually, I mean the embossing ink sat on there for a bit before I put the embossing powder on, I had no problem getting the embossing powder to stick to it. That's one of the things I really like about this powder. I mean about that ink. Mary asked you to Pennsylvania. You know, I would love to move to Pennsylvania, Mary. I just, um, we have to stay in a fairly dry climate because of um, one of the issues that Darren deals with with his health. 
And so we have to kind of stick to drier, drier areas. We are actually looking in um, Lubbock, Texas. We've gone about as far east as we can go. We've, yeah, we, uh, that's about as far east as we can probably manage without starting to hit some real humidity. Otherwise, in a heartbeat, I would move to Pennsylvania. We considered it, but we just, um, it wasn't worth the risk. Can we are at, oh, thank you so much. Who said that? Emily. Emily, thank you so much. Okay, so this, see, that's one of the things I like. It's not, um, you don't lose everything behind it. It's really uh, just kind of sheer. So you can have that kind of watermark look, but add the shimmer to it. Can you see that? I don't know if the camera picks up, how much the camera picks up as far as the shimmer goes. I don't know if I have it all the way cooked, <laughs> but we're going to move on to the, um, the black one. It looks like I could stand to cook that a little longer. We'll do that after. Okay. So now here's the black one that we've layered. I'll hold it up a little closer so you can see when the magic begins to happen. There's a little Oklahoma for 33 years. And now I've moved back to Michigan, where I was born. I love the home I live most of the time, so it's got cold. Ah, that, Oklahoma is a pretty, it looks like a really pretty state to me. We haven't had winter in six years. Yeah, we've lived in Arizona for about six years, and I really miss fall, and I really miss winter. Well, to be honest with you, I miss winter from the inside. I don't miss driving in the snow. I don't miss shoveling the snow. But I'm looking forward to having um, more seasons again. And I'm hoping maybe we get there before the uh, fall is over. That is, that is the plan. If everything goes according to plan. Gina says it looks almost like a prospect. Yeah, isn't it beautiful? It, and like I said, it's kind of subtle. But I like that about it because we are going to add something else that is really, um, it's going to demand more, <laughs> what's the word? It commands a little more uh, attention. So I think I'm just going to show you what I used because I don't want to take the time to cut all of this out right now. So I will show you, I, I'm going to show you the project and then I'm going to show you what I did for this back panel. This is the brown butter cardstock. And I love the way that it turned out. It was so easy too. And all I did was I added, mostly I just used um, Raven ink with one of these little, one of these little, is that Raven or is that vintage? Let's try vintage first, because now I can't remember. Jen says you got to go. Jen, thanks for joining. Have a good day. She said thanks. So yeah. I'll use a little bit of this, but I think I just used the, the Raven. But I kind of like having a little bit of the deeper shade of whatever I'm using, just to add a little age. Okay. So we've got a little bit started there and then I'm just going to take my Raven ink and one of these little blender sticks if I can find the black one. There we go. Now where did my Raven ink go? There it is. Okay and then I'm just going to go around the edges a little bit. Hopefully the shadow from my hand doesn't make it so you can't see. No humidity, then avoid Missouri. It feels like breathing water some days. Ew, gross. <laughs> Missouri, uh, misery or Missouri? Okay. 
Emily asked if Dan is Daniel moving with us. Um, my older boy Daniel has actually been considering it, and it sounds like he has decided that yes, he wants to move with us. The cost of rent is getting crazy. Yeah, the here. rent here in Arizona for the price that he pays uh, for sharing an apartment, a two-bedroom tiny apartment, he can get pretty much a, a small house, a whole small house for rent in Lubbock. So, we actually were showing him a few of them and he was like, ah, oh, yeah, that's looking pretty good. One of them had a that's pool a and a... <laughs> exercise room and the whole bit and it was cheaper than the, what he's paying and he does not live in the lap of luxury trust me and Lubbock has a university so it's a younger crowd for him there too yeah so. I think it'll be good for him I think he'll enjoy it there all right so you can kind of see how I did that back panel and then one of my favorites I know I mention it all the time but I'm going to mention it yet again one of my all-time favorite die sets that you should definitely have and especially when it's this time of year is the fall leaves die set there's five dies in the set and you can get such a range of looks from it you can see you know you use the foil paper you can get that you can see i used the glitter stock which we i used on this project and then i just used black you can go with kind of a rustic look or you can go with more of an elegant look like i was going for here and then I just uh, stamped the sentiment and wrapped the ribbon around. This little piece here is actually from the ATC kit from last month, the strawberry one. And I just thought it was, I thought it looked really pretty with this. So just kind of experiment with what you have in your stash. I always pick up little boxes like this when I, when I see them, I get deal on them or if I've got a coupon or something, I'll just go get something I might not always get but can you imagine how, how fun if you had one of these at all of the place settings at the Thanksgiving dinner table or just if you want to you know show your appreciation to somebody just a fun little box and then and then like I said I'll finish that out and then I'll show you some I'll post it at some point <laughs> all right let me flip the camera all right well, I appreciate you joining me today and we'll come up with something different for next week, but I wanted to, I wanted you to at least get to see a little of everything that was in the um, release. And even now, I, I haven't shown you everything. There are still things that I just, there's only so much time and only so many, <laughs> so many projects I can do in a day. So I hope that you enjoyed that and I will be back next week with something new and maybe some news. Maybe we'll, we'll know something more on what's going on with the house. Thanks so much. Thanks some more. I told you it's been a week. Thanks so much. I will see you next week. Bye-bye.